All right, let's go ahead and get started. It is six o'clock and we are ready this evening. If you would, please grab your hymnal and we are going to sing number 143. 343, I said one, didn't I? 343, 343, at the cross. Please stand if you would. All right, verse one. At last and did my Savior bleed and did my sovereign die. Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Verse 2, was it for crimes that I have done, he groaned upon the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Verse 4, but drops of grief can ne'er repay the debt of love I owe. Hear, Lord. I give myself away, tis all that I can do. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. All right, thank you so much for coming this evening. Brother Brent, would you lead us to the Lord in a word of prayer, please? Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that we can gather in your house, Lord, and pray, Lord, you help us set aside our cares and worries, and Lord, and just be with you during this time. And Lord, I pray that you're able to sing it, that Lord, and everything we say and do, Lord, will honor and lift you up. But for the heavenly mind, you can preach and teach your word. Help us get something from your word, Lord. Thank you for our church family. Pray that you bless them with right here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. All right, if you did not get a bulletin, there's still several bulletins out there. Please help yourself. Uh, the missionary of the week are the Paytons to Mexico. And something Brother Carroll is going to start doing is he's going to start putting uh, whatever missionary it is, he's going to put their prayer letter on the back table. So uh, some of you don't never get to see them, so he, something he's going to do, he's going to put several copies out there. You can pick it up, take it with you, kind of give you a little reminder for... Uh, the week of the missionary and then also this week's birthday is uh, mrs felton she's a year younger this year so uh let's make sure we pray for her and tell her happy birthday and then prayer requests the pulpit committee uh, mrs houston the terrells uh dorothy bryson sissy felton linda hill by arnold uh, haley mccutcheon larry and pam nolan lee montgomery and please pray for vacation bible school so we have a lot to pray for very important that we pray for each other um, God just he wants to hear from us it's, it's his children it's, it's kind of like uh, my son talking to me I love it when he spends time talking to me it's the way God is he wants us to talk to him and bring petitions for to him and uh, so let's make sure we're praying for each other and that God will bless and especially for VBS I'm really praying that God will uh, touch the lives of of these young people that we have come in and uh, maybe touch the lives of the workers too. Maybe maybe God's going to do some work in, in, in the workers' life. But let's just pray that God will uh, work there and that we can see a good crowd, see some young people come to know him, and different things like that. So, All right, if you would, grab your psalm book. We are going to do number 340, 340, the old rugged cross. Verse 
verse 1. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Verse 2 Oh, that old rugged cross so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me for the dear lamb of god left his glory above to bear it to dark calvary so i'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Verse 4 To the old rugged cross I will ever be true It's shame and reason Approach gladly bear Then he'll call me someday To my home for a Where his glory forever I share So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. All right. Brother Nolan, would you please pray for the offering? Lauren, thank you for filling in. I really do appreciate it. So, all right. If you want to, Brother Kerry, you can go ahead and pass that out. Um, just a few other announcements here. I didn't give all a go, but uh, 
They'll be decorating the church uh, this Wednesday from 9 to 2.30. So if you can help any part of that, please uh, come and help there. And then Wednesday night, we'll have our regular midweek service. Everything that goes on there. And then next Saturday, uh, visitation. We'll be going out and passing out flyers for VBS, trying to uh, find out where these young people are and try to get their, a flyer to their parents and uh, different things. So on the back table, there's a food sign-up sheet. If you would, please look at that. And then there's some flyers there. And then there's a few posters right down front. And then we will have a very short VBS meeting right after the service um, just to kind of make sure all the questions are kind of answered and then also to pass out the t-shirts so uh, if you could just stay like I said it won't be long but if you would please just stay for just a little while we would appreciate that all right we are going to be in Psalms this evening Psalms chapter 56. Psalms chapter 56. Brother Kerry, did we have enough? Okay. Good. I didn't want anybody to feel left out. And again, please, these... Uh, papers that I fill out if you don't feel if you don't feel comfortable filling them out or don't want to please understand that's just fine it's just something that uh, as I go through this lesson some of these are what I teach the teenagers so I thought you know what I'll give it out to you sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of a, uh, a guideline that, hey here's what we're covering and here's what we're going through um, and then the big thing are the questions at the end just uh, to try to get us to think you know, a lot of times we go through life and, and we don't really think about what God's trying to do. So, but um, we're going to cover part of that today. So, if you are tonight, if you're able to, please stand for the reading of God's Word. Psalms chapter 56. And we're going to read verses 3 and 4. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God... I will, I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for our church. And I pray that tonight, dear Lord, we'll have an open heart and open mind to hear from you. I pray that the Holy Spirit, dear Lord, would work in our lives so that the, the sermon will be exactly what you want it to be. And I pray that each one of us will get something from it from you. And I pray that you'll help us tonight. Bless Brother Carroll he's in the, the prison. Please give him strength as he preaches to those men and help him. We love you, Jesus. Bless us this evening. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. All right. You can see there in the heading, it talks about trust-filled choices. What kind of choices are we making? Uh, each one of us throughout the day, you're going to make choices. Some good, some bad. Some don't matter. Some make a huge difference. But you're going to make choices throughout the day. So tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about Elijah and Elisha. So in Roman numeral one, it's there. It says Elisha's uh, changes in relationship. Elisha's changes in relationship. So if you would, turn over to 2 Kings. 2 Kings in chapter uh, 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. In verse 1, And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Uh, what it's talking about here is it, there was coming a time that God was going to take Elisha from this earth. Okay, 
He wasn't going to go through death. The Lord was just going to take him up. And Elisha said, hey, I want to be there when that happens. I want to see God take Elijah, Elijah up into heaven. And big deal because, um, well, we're going to get into it in just a minute. But there's a lot of things that pertain to that part of it. So it was known that Elijah was going to be taken up into heaven the prophets of that time knew that it was going to happen. So as we get to that time, at three different times during uh, the trip, Elijah entreated Elisha to stay behind in comfort while he continued. Because God had previously revealed that he would miraculously take Elijah to heaven, Elisha willingly chose to stay with his master until the very end, knowing that a dying person usually bestowed blessings upon the others before he died. Elisha did not want to miss the opportunity to receive God's blessing on his life from Elijah. So Elisha knew, hey, if I'm with him when he passes, when God takes him, I'm going to get an extra blessing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I stay close to Elijah. I'm going to make sure that no matter what happens throughout this trip where they go see uh, the other prophets, whether in Bethel and uh, uh, where else did they go? Jericho. Wherever they go, went, Elisha said, I'm not leaving Elijah's side. Why? I want to see it. Are we close enough to God that we want to see God work? Are we doing things that we want to see Hey, how is God going to make this work in our lives? There's in here, each one of us are going through something, whatever it may be. There comes a time, I don't know about you, but in my life, I take it to God and say, okay, God, I can't handle this. It's yours. I don't know what you're going to do. I'm almost to the point I don't care what you're going to do. It's yours. I can do no more. And God says, now it's time for me to work. I'm ready to do it. Why? I've given my will to see God work. And that's where Elisha was here. I am going to give him myself to see how God is going to work. How is God going to do this? Because they knew that he was going to do it. That it, there was going to come a time that Elijah was going. Elijah and Elisha also walked out. So as they come to, I skipped a little bit here. After Elisha finished Elijah finished visiting with the prophets, he and Elisha, along with 50 other prophets who followed behind him, headed toward the Jordan River. Elijah struck the water with his mantle, or his cloak, and miraculously the water divided to make a dry path, just as the Israelites had crossed the Red Sea and the Jordan River in the past. Elijah and Elisha also walked on dry ground, from one bank of the river to the other on the other side. Although they did not cross the river with Elijah, the 50 prophets saw the supernatural part of Jordan. So what happened was they got up to the Jordan River. And Elisha said, okay, we're going to go a little bit further. All these prophets that had followed them also wanted to see what was going to happen. They get to the Jordan River and Elijah takes his coat off and dips it in the Jordan River and the Jordan River splits. And him and Elisha walk over. I don't know about you, but that to me right there would be like, whoa. There's a lot going on here. But those prophets did not cross over. They stayed on the other side. They got to see the miracle, but that was the end of it. So Elijah and Elisha, they keep walking. They keep going. They go a little bit further. And upon reaching the other side of the river, Elijah turned and asked, what he could do for Elisha before God took him to heaven. And listen to this, because this is one of the important parts. Elisha wisely requested that he be given a double portion of Elijah's spirit, knowing that Elijah depart, departure would bring definite change in many people's lives. Elisha did not want an inheritance from Elijah of material blessing, but he desired to be Elijah's successor. What's he saying here? You know what? He didn't want a personal, he didn't want money, he didn't want things. What he wanted was God to bless him twice as much as Elijah. I wonder how many of us pray that God would bless us that much. 
not being selfish. Elijah wasn't praying this prayer to say, oh, look what I got. I got Elijah's cloak. I got power. It's not why Elisha did it. Elisha did it so that he could show God's power and God's will. I believe that's why God works miracles in our lives. Things that we don't think can happen, and God works it out. And you're like, whoa, why does he do that? So God, people can see what God is doing. While the two men were still talking, a chariot of horses, came, uh, a fire, came down and separated Elijah and Elisha. Within seconds, a whirlwind swept Elijah into the presence of God. When Elisha saw his master being taken from him, he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Elisha tore his clothes in mourning because he would greatly miss his teacher. Realizing that God had granted his request for a double portion of Elijah's spirit, Elijah, Elisha put on his master's cloak, which had fallen from, from him during the ascension. Why is that important? Why is that cloak important? Because if you uh, study like royalty and things like that, one of the greatest things they can do is pass their, their, their kingly garment here, the prophet's garment, onto the next person. It shows the power that went from one to the other. And what that cloak did is it showed, when, he, when Elisha went back to the prophets, it would show that, hey, Elisha now has been blessed of God, just like Elijah was. Roman numeral two here. Elisha's change changes in leadership. Elisha's changes in leadership. Second Kings two verses fourteen through twenty two. And we're not going to read all this, but Elisha's changes in leadership. Second Kings two, fourteen through twenty two. In the midst of the change, Elisha took opportunity with the prophets to establish themselves as their new leader. With 50 prophets standing on the opposite bank of the Jordan River, Elisha displayed God's given power and confirmed his position as Elijah's successor. So you got these 50 prophets that are standing on one side of Jordan. You've got Elisha standing on the other side of Jordan. Now these prophets saw what happened on the other side. They weren't there, but they saw this whirlwind and they saw what happened. And here comes Elisha. And I'm sure these prophets thought, okay, what, what's going to happen now? Let's see what's, what's Elisha going to do. Does Elisha have God's hand on his life like Elijah did? And what does Elisha do? He goes up and it says, Elisha has actions in question. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Had a twofold purpose. He not only wanted to confirm himself that God had given him the same power as he had given Elijah, but also he wanted to show the prophets, uh, prophets who were watching that he had been divinely appointed by God to lead them. Observing of the whirlwind and the second parting of the Jordan, the prophets concluded that the spirit of Elijah doth rest in Elisha. They ran to meet him, fell on his face, and readily acknowledged him as their new leader. They saw the miracle that Elijah did. Then they saw the miracle that Elisha did. And therefore the prophet said, you have God's hand upon your life. And you know, through life, we've had people in our church. We've had Sunday school teachers. We've had pastors. We've had people go through our ministry here that have had the power of God on their life. And we have been blessed because we have gotten to know them but i wonder in our life how many of us have taken what they've taught us and transferred it and given to somebody else hmm. that's what elisha was doing elisha didn't want money he didn't want power he didn't want anything he wanted god to bless him so that he could go and bless somebody else like elijah had done but twice as much. Wow. You think about that. How much responsibility has God given you because of the things he has blessed in your life? 
Let's look down in Roman numeral three. Elisha's changes in responsibilities. In responsibilities. 2 Kings 4, 38 through 41. 2 Kings 4, 38 through 41. And Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a, a dearth in the land, and the sons of the prophets were setting before him. And he said unto his servant, Set on the great pot and the sheath pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered therefore thereof wild gourds his lap full, and came and shared them with the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. So they poured out for the meat men to eat. And it came to pass that they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said, O oh, oh, thou man of God, there is death in the pot, and they should not eat thereof. What happened? These men went out, and they got some herbs and stuff, and they had a pot of stew. They poured these herbs in there and come to find out these were poisonous herbs. So now these prophets who are eating says, whoa, wait a minute, we're going to die. And Elisha says, I can take care of that. He made up some meal. He poured it in the pot, stirred the pot, and what did that do? It took all the poison out. Wow, that's pretty amazing. That's how God works. That's because he had asked Elijah for a double portion. He wanted to see God work through his life as well. Letter A. He cared for the widows. He cared for the widows of the prophets. He cared for the widows of the prophets. And this is 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7. Oh, I don't have that on there. Okay. This is uh, 2 Kings. Uniquely different from Elijah's ministry, which focused upon the condemnation of idolatry and disobedience, Elisha's ministry centered upon teaching the servant, serving others. As a leader, Elisha chose to show great sensitivity to the needs of the prophets and their families. A prophet, that I was reading here, a prophet had died, and he had borrowed money. And because he had borrowed money, his wife and two sons had no way to pay that money back. So what did they do? The person who loaned them the money said, I'll take your two sons as slaves until, as bond servants, until they work enough to pay that back. And this widow went to Elisha and said, hey, they're going to take my sons. I need your help. And what did Elijah say? What do you have in your house? We're broke. We have nothing. We, I mean, we are completely broke. We have nothing. Well, wait a minute. We got one little pot of oil. Very small pot of oil. He says, okay, go to thy neighbors and ask for as many pots as you can get. Go to every neighbor. Go everywhere you can go. Get as many pots as you can get. And once you get those pots, we're going to go into the house. Elisha prayed over it. And the widow started pouring oil out of this little pot. She poured, and she poured, and she poured. Whoa, wow, that pot's full. Let's go to the next one. She pours, she pours, she pours. No bottom in there. Hey, it's still coming out. Whoa, hold it. There's pot number two. She went to every pot that they had went and got and filled it full of oil. I'm going to add one little thing here. I wonder if that's in our life, how many of us would have went and got two pots and thought that's all we needed. This lady and her son didn't. They went and got lots of pots. They thought if God's going to do this, we wanted to do it big. Can I tell you something with VBS coming? We'll get what we pour into it. We pour a little bit, we'll get a little bit. We want God to do something, we got to trust him. we got to keep saying, God, here it is. God, I'm trusting you. God, touch the life of that little boy that I don't even know yet. Lord, 
I want to see somebody saved at VBS. Lord, we're giving our all. We're doing what we can. What are you doing? You're saying, God, here it is. I want you to bless it. I want you to take care of it. We can't do it. I can knock on every house in New Franklin. I can't get one kid to come unless God does something. What happened here? Elisha blessed that widow to the point she was able to fill enough pots, take that oil and sell it, and pay off her debt. Does that not sound like our God? He's capable. He's able. He wants to. But what are we doing? What's our pot? What are we pouring into it? It's up to us. Elisha could have said, I want, he did. He said, I want a double portion. I want something more so that I can do it for God. Letter B, I believe. Letter B. He met the needs of the prophets. He met the needs of the prophets. And this is the verse. I kind of got ahead of myself there. I kind of got a little bit turned around there. But this is where they had the, the prophets went out and did the herbs and did all that. And then Elisha put the mill in there and corrected it. And they were all saved. Okay, So I apologize. I, I jumped ahead of myself. But in this lesson, in this sermon tonight, what do, what do we take away from it? Like I said, when I preach, I have one goal, and that's to get people to think. All I want you to do is, is think. And it may not even be about something I preached about. But what's God doing? God wants to touch our lives. He wants us to be close enough to him so that we get to see his miracles. Amen. We get to see God work in a miraculous way. You know, in my life, I've seen some things that I've gotten on my knees and say, okay, God, this, there's no way this can happen. There's no way. Financially, emotionally, it, it just it can't happen. And in the next week, everything shifted. Things happened. The, the, God worked this out and worked that out, and it happened. I give you story after story. It's amazing. But God says, I want you to give it to me. Amen. I want you to trust me. Amen. Then I'll give you what you need to go through it. Teachers in VBS, the only way you're going to touch the, the life of that young person is if you're asking God, God, help me be a vessel to help these young people. That's the only way we can do it. Can't do it in our own power. You can be the greatest teacher in the world. Unless you got God's power, you won't see those kids. Tonight, let's think about this. What does God have for you? What's that double portion God wants to do in your life? Some of you in here, you, you've, everybody in here has lived a different life. Some of you have went through things I haven't had to go through. Some of you have had uh, medical issues. Some of you have, have went through a family crisis, job situation, whatever it is. God says, I'm right here. All you got to do is come to me and ask, and I'll help you. Let's run down through these questions here real quick. Is change a good, is good or bad? Is change good or bad? I know most people think, okay, that's a trick question. Change is good. Change is good. If, if Elisha had not been there to see Elijah, he wouldn't have got it. So... Change is good. Okay? Why? Why? It shows God's will. You know what? A lot of times we're going in the same direction. What do we do? We get in a rut. We do the same thing. I'll tell you, I do the same thing every morning. I get up at the same time. I fix my oatmeal pretty much the same time. I put the same ingredients in my oatmeal. I pour out my vitamins. 
I go, I sit at the same place, I eat it, I open my Bible, I read my Bible, I eat my oatmeal, I take my bite. Same thing every time. You know what? Sometimes God says, I want you to change it up. So you know what? He had me run out of oatmeal one day. Voila, no oatmeal. My schedule's all messed up. So I had to make toast, put some jelly, get a little peanut butter, change my schedule. What did I do? I was in such a rut, which a lot of times we get into, I needed to change. I needed something. Same way, how many times we come into church and we sit in the same pew, do the same thing, and we walk out the same way. Hmm. Change is good. Change is good. How did change affect Elisha? How did this change affect Elisha? He was able to see God work. He was able to see God work. Without being there, he would have never seen God work. Have you ever seen God do something and you just walk away and go, wow, it happens. Let's keep going. Who did Elisha trust after Elijah was gone? See, Elisha put his trust in Elijah, following him, listening to him. Then once Elijah was gone, who did Elisha fully trust in? God. God said, hey. I'm not going to be one of the 50 anymore. I'm going to be the one that's kind of in charge, God. i got to trust you. you got to do it. Who should we trust in all things? Help me out, guys. God, all right. Does trusting God assure everything will go right in your life? Yes. No? It'd be nice. It'd be nice. I wish the Christian life was that easy, Brother Kerry. But no, it's not. But what does trusting God assure? He's going to be with you. There is nothing you will go through that he will not be there. And then here, Elisha was at the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing for God to bless him. Elisha was at the right place at the right time doing the right thing for God to bless him. God wants to bless us, but we got to be where we're supposed to be doing what we're supposed to do to see God do the job, do the work. Does God want to bless his children? Yes. Are you a child of God? I hope so. If you say no, then please come see me after the service so we can discuss this one. Okay? Does he want to does God want to bless you? Yes, you're his child. Then what must you do for God to bless you? What's that? Turn it over to him. Elisha. All I got is yours. This is it. Today, what are some areas people need to trust God more? And I only put four. I could have put 20 on here. But what, what are some things? Finance? Yes. What else? To know him better. To know him better. Yes. Trust? Yes. Our relationships. Our, our uh, spiritual uh, life. Like I said, sometimes we get in a rut. Are we really serving God? What do we need to trust God more in? Brother, uh, I have my wife as Jesus Christ. Guide our life, take charge of our life, plan our life, and put the people we want in our life, not what we want, but His will be done in our life, just like He is on earth. Yep. That's right. And that's, that's exactly what Elisha wanted. He said, hey, I want a double portion of that. I want God to give me a double portion. What does God want out of your life? What does God want out of your life? A relationship with him. He wants, he wants to be a part of it. 
He wants to be there for you. He wants to help you. So let me ask you, and just in closing, let me ask you, are we one of the 50 prophets that are on the other side of Jordan watching God do something over there? Are we trying to be an Elisha that says, hey, I'm not going anywhere until that man goes. Wherever he goes, I'm going. God, wherever you go, I'm going. May not always be what I want to do, but I'm going your way. Why? Because I want God to bless me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, dear Lord, for our church. And dear Lord, I, I, can, I could sit and, and just think of all the, the men and ladies who have come through this ministry, dear Lord, that have taught me so much on how to love you and, and see the miracles that you've done in our church and how you've blessed our church and, and just the different things. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll bless us even again. I pray, starting with VBS this next week, dear Lord, you would just bring the right young people in and the parents. And dear Lord, I pray that we could uh, just have that double portion of what they had to be able to teach these young people your word so that we could see these young people come to know you. So we could see these young people saved and possibly the parents saved. And dear Lord, I pray that you'll just give us direction. Help us, dear Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. If you would, please stand. We're going to do one verse. If the Lord spoke to you, I, I'm not one that believes you've got to come to the altar, but I'm one that believes if God speaks to you, talk to him. Whether it's where you're at, whether it's the altar, if the Lord spoke to you tonight, talk to him. She's going to play one verse. If you look up here again, thank you so much for coming tonight. I uh, I appreciate it, and I know others in the church appreciate it too. It's it's always good to be able to preach to more than one or two people. <laughs> so, but thank you again for coming. We'll have a, a short BBS meeting um, right down front here. Um, give out the T-shirts and things like that, and we'll kind of go from there. All right, uh, brother Kerry, would you close us in a word of prayer, please? Amen. Thank you. Laura.